Hello and welcome to our channel. My name is Hafsa Salim. In this video, I'm going to be sharing how we were able to grow an organic vegetable garden using the Back to Eden gardening method. This is also referred to as no-till gardening as well as wood chip gardening. We were able to do this in a very small space and at very minimal cost. So if you are working with a small space or looking to save money on building your vegetable garden, I'm going to share in several steps in this video how we were able to do both of those things. We were able to turn this into this and we grew squash, peas, peppers, cucumbers, and a lot of tomatoes. If you are a new homesteader and you're interested in learning more about backyard farming, click on the subscribe link below to see all of our future videos on how to grow your own food as well as how to get started with backyard chickens. So number one, we found that it was very easy to maintain because we set up this garden in June of 2020. It is now end of October 2020 when I'm recording this video. I haven't had to water the garden over three months. That speaks volumes for anyone that is listening to this that has ever had a garden of any type. You usually have to take care of watering it periodically. We haven't had to do that at all because we simply rely directly on natural rain water. The second benefit that we found from it is that we didn't have to deal with any weeds. If you've ever grown anything in your life again, you know that weeds are typically a problem. You spend time, you spend energy pulling them out or trying to kill them. We haven't had to deal with any weeds whatsoever in the last five months, which is awesome. And as I already mentioned, if you're working with a small space or looking to save costs, by following the exact steps which I'm going to be sharing in this video, which are six steps, you can have the same exact results. The first step is choosing the right location for your vegetable garden. This is so important before you even start building it for a couple reasons. Number one, a vegetable garden usually requires a lot of sunlight. So you want to choose a space that has the most direct sunlight hitting it, not only right now, but throughout different seasons, specifically through spring, summer and fall. The sun does change angles throughout the year, so you should have a general idea of which space receives the most sunlight. You might actually have to keep an eye on the sun for a couple days to figure that one out for yourself. For us, we did place our vegetable garden a good distance from the house. It's about 100 feet away. Another reason why is you want to choose a spot that is flat is going to make your life so much easier in working with that space if it's already flat. If it's not, find a way to level it, especially if you're going to be building a raised bed. And lastly, you have to consider watering it. Do you have a hose that reaches as far as your garden is going to be placed? Or are you going to be carrying water to water that garden? You have to keep all these things in mind. You can also set up rain barrels, water barrels around that area if you happen to have something that's going to catch water. That is also what we do if you're looking to save costs. Use rainwater to water your garden instead of using water that you're paying for. Use what nature is already giving you. The second step is to lay down landscaping fabric or gardening fabric. If you've never heard of these before, they help to keep weeds out of your garden. And as I mentioned, we had no weeds to deal with this year. So I highly recommend that you use something on the ground. It usually only costs a few dollars a roll and you shouldn't need too much depending on how large your vegetable garden is going to be. You could also use construction paper instead of landscaping or gardening fabric, which also come in different grades. The thicker grades are going to cost a little bit more, but long term, it's a lot more worth it to get a thicker grade. Before you even lay that fabric or the construction paper down, mow the lawn as short as it possibly can be and lay down this fabric or the construction paper right before you lay down the materials that you need for your gardening bed. The third step is to build the raised beds. This part is not a necessity, it's simply pure choice. So we decided to go with a raised bed because aesthetically it's a lot nicer. And secondly, it makes life a lot easier in working around that space as well as keeping things out, keeping animals and kids out of the garden because the last thing you want is someone trampling on your plants as soon as they start coming up out of the garden. We were able to save costs on building our raised bed because we went to a local sawmill to pick up the wood. 
We were already going there because we were picking up cedar boards for the chicken coop we were building at the time. We asked for extra raw cut cedar boards that are 8 to 10 feet in length and 8 to 10 inches in height. We put them together in the shape of squares, so 8 feet by 8 feet squares, and we screwed together the four corners with two to three screws. That was it. Because we went to a local sawmill for the wood instead of a big box store, we were able to get better quality wood, raw cut cedar, and at really low cost. We also decided to go with raw cut because aesthetically it has that more rustic look, and cedar because cedar is probably the best wood that you can use for a raised bed. It's highly rot resistant as well as insect resistant. If you are going to be getting wood from anywhere, get heat treated or untreated cedar. You don't want to go with pressure treated because pressure treated typically has chemicals in it that do leach into your garden over time. It's not that all of them are like that, but many of them are and there's really no way to know what chemicals are in that wood, so simply stay away from that for your raised bed. The fourth step is to now start filling your raised bed. There's only two materials that you need to fill your raised bed using the Back to Eden method. The first one is dried manure. You want to fill several inches, at least four to five inches of dry manure. You can use manure from cows, horses or chickens or a combination, it doesn't really matter. The most important part of that is that it is already dried out. If you use manure that has not had time to dry, you will have a very difficult time growing anything in that garden. So make sure you're picking up dried manure from wherever you're getting it from. For us personally, we have chickens, but we haven't had enough manure from them to fill a raised bed of that size. So we went to a local farm down the road and we were able to pick up dry cow manure for free. We simply had to actually show up and shovel it up ourselves. Funny story, we took a friend with us to help us do it a lot faster. If you physically have to go somewhere and shovel it up yourself, it's easier if you have help doing it. So myself, my husband and our friend Rick were there for two to three hours shoveling up cow manure. I know that sounds not so pleasant, but it was actually pretty hilarious because we had a good laugh the rest of the day about it. Depending on where you are, simply ask around if you do have access to any farms near where you are within a decent driving distance. A lot of people are willing to get rid of it for free. You simply have to ask around. The fifth step is to layer the second material, which is wood chips or wood chip compost. You want to layer this on top of the dry manure, at least five to six inches worth of it. And you can get this for free as we did because we went to our local city yard. It's an area where the town dumps all of their extra gravel, wood chips, compost. Again, you simply have to show up and shovel it up yourself. Usually there's not someone there to help you do it. So my husband and I took the truck, we took our friend with us again, he helped us fill it up. It took about two to three hours to fill up that truck bed and that was just enough to fill an eight by eight raised bed for exactly what we needed. You'll know if that wood chip material or that compost is quality material for your garden because you'll see a lot of bugs in it, especially worms, and it'll usually be very dark, very moist soil when you handle it. That is the best type of soil that you can use for your wood chip garden. The sixth step to protect your garden from people or animals is to put up a fence. I put up a fence right against the raised bed so nothing can get in there. As I mentioned, we have chickens and the raised beds are actually right by the chicken coop. So they would very easily jump in there and start foraging in that area and probably rip out our seeds. Anytime we needed to go in there to do any work, simply pull back the side to be able to do whatever we needed to do. And we haven't had any of our plants pulled out, any of our plants eaten by deer or anything like that. So putting up a small fence around that area will go a really long way. If you enjoyed this video, click on the like button. If you found value from it, leave a comment. And if you are interested in learning a lot more about backyard farming, click on the subscribe link. This video is part of a series that I'm doing all on how to grow vegetables. You'll see that at the end of this message. I will have several more videos on how to germinate seeds quickly, for example, how to compost, and how to grow specific vegetables. So stay tuned for that. If you are a novice gardener, Download my beginner's guide to gardening. It's all of the basics you need to know 
on how to set up a vegetable garden as well as grow herbs. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.